Hi there, my name is John Slipik and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Hawk Creek Systems. Today we'll be looking at Part 3 in our four-part video series where we built Sauron's Ring of Power from the Lord of the Rings. So back in Part 2 of our video series, we looked at how to uh, trace over top of a sketch picture to correct mismatches in our text. In Part 3 for today, we're going to be building the ring itself and using the wrap feature to place our text onto it. So in SolidWorks, the first thing we're going to do is build the ring itself. And I have a cross-section of the ring to do that that has an axis of revolution right within the sketch. And if you look the way I uh, built this, it's basically an ellipse with a line offset off the center a little bit. And I've trimmed that away. So let's pre-select that. And I'm going to hit Revolve. Pick my axis. Hit OK. And I'm going to apply material immediately as brush brass right to the body. Okay, so for the wrap feature, let's start with the outside text. I'm going to pre-select it and hit wrap. And I'm going to pick on the outside of a ring. So there's three parameters when it comes to the wrap feature here. There's the emboss, which basically adds material onto the ring. And it, you can put a depth onto it. So let's hit OK and we're going to show you the difference between the three of these. Okay, so you can see that's added material to the outside of it. Now let's edit this. And we're going to deboss it this time. Just to show you the difference between all three of them here. So there we go. That's kind of cut 0.1 millimeters inside. And then finally, we're going to use the scribe feature. So the scribe is basically is almost like it, it'll project the curves of the text onto the surface, but it also acts like a split line where you see now I can pick these as, as faces. So the advantage of that too um, is I can add this. Well, I mean, I could have added this anyways, but just to make the text a bit more glowing. Okay, so and then let's do the inner text. We're going to wrap that. Now one thing to note here is, if you see my previous videos, uh, I've actually reversed the direction of how I've put this text. It was almost mirrored direction before. And if you're doing this wrap feature and you find the text goes onto the wrong face, like say maybe it goes that way and it's a mirror image, that can easily be rectified with this reverse direction button. So I'm just going to OK that. OK. So in order to project this onto the other side of the ring, because it's basically is almost a mirror image, there's two of these, um, we can't just mirror this. Uh, we're going to have to actually do the circular pattern. But before I do that, I'm just going to hide some things here, get them out of the way. Hide the text. OK, so let's go back to the circular pattern. Okay, for the features, I want both wrap features, and I'm just going to pick on this edge here. Now, this is going to be the most uh, consuming or CPU consuming operation of everything we're doing here. And the reason that we're doing the circular pattern is because if we do have the mirror, then we're going to get mirrored text on the other side, and that's not what we want. We want it to be uh, legible left to right. As you can see, it takes a bit. Okay, so there we go. So that's basically with our limited bit of text that we did here, just to show you how to do it. Now, just switching over, I have our part actually completed with the full text in here. Again, this took a long time to do, so so you can see this actually turned out really good. Now, if I want to make this look extra cool. I have some custom scenes set up here, just to give it that real Lord of the Rings flavor. And there we go. Make it look even, uh, stepping it up the awesome scale a little bit more. If I take my second scene, I have an environment uh, that basically mirrors the fire right under the ring itself. Well, I hope you found this video useful. In summary, for part three of this video series, we effectively completed our ring by building it and placing our text on it. 
Please join us for the final part, part four in our series, where we, re we revisit the text construction workflow and greatly simplify it using Adobe Illustrator. For more great tips and tricks like this, please hit the subscribe button below, and please also check out our website at hotgreeksystems.com. Thanks for watching.